and uh, we will be using the advanced search. And uh, after this, we will look into the Scopus metrics and we will do practice regarding the Scopus metrics. Now the first practice, uh, practice number one. We need to find search results, all search results using Scopus advanced search where the exact phrase is mentioned. Uh, do you remember what do we need to put in to uh, look for exact phrase? It is an curly brackets. We need to use curly brackets to look for an exact phrase in Scopus. To curly, curly brackets, we'll look for exact phrase and uh, quotation marks help us look for uh, approximate phrase. So our phrase is called <clears throat> agent-based modeling. It could be mentioned in title, description and keywords. So it is just um, a proposition to search within some search fields. When we are using Scopus to conduct a new search, we just click on, uh, let me enlarge the screen, and we just click on the search tab. Then we need to go to the advanced search because um, uh, we are going to use advanced search today. Advanced document search is here. Just click on it and we have the advanced search page opened. We have a specific phrase, but also we have mentioned that this phrase could be uh, found in title, a abstract and keywords. So what field code can we use? Let me try to enlarge this. OK, field codes, textual context, abstract, all fields, document title, document title and abstracts, document title, abstracts and keywords. OK, this is our situation or document title, abstract, keywords and author. This is our uh, right answer because we were asked to use the advanced search within document title, abstract and keywords. How do, we, how do we use this field code? We need to click on the plus next to this mm, field code. We need to click on plus and here in our query string we have this abbreviation title abc abs k it means title abstract keywords and our <clears throat> phrase we can copy it from here and it is an exact phrase so we need to use curly brackets we use curly brackets and we put our uh, <clears throat> phrase inside curly brackets uh, be careful because there were some brackets before. We do not need to delay them. We just use another pair of curly brackets here. We can go uppercase or lowercase. It doesn't matter because um, EBSCO will find both uh, variants. Agent based modeling as an exact phrase in title, abstract and keywords. And let's search for it. We have found more than 5,000 documents where in um, uh, title, abstract or keywords, we have the exact phrase agent-based modeling. And it, was, it will be an agent-based modeling phrase uh, with uh, particular spelling with hyphen because we have used curly brackets. Let's check if the answer is right yes it is right uh, i will share this presentation with you and you will have this uh, practices and right answers practice number two we need to find all results in scopus advanced search uh, where the approximate phrase is mentioned in title description and keywords the approximate phrase 
we can find it using quotation marks. Let's copy this phrase also. If we have uh, made some search and we need to conduct a new, a new one, we can just click on search or click on edit. Let's edit this one. We can clear this form and it will be empty. And again, we are looking in, into the field code called <clears throat> title abstract keywords. And it is an approximate search. So approximate search requires using quotation marks and three dimensional space. Let's look for it. And we have found 11 thousand documents regarding three-dimensional space mentioned in title or abstracts or keywords somewhere. If we go into the document, we will find them. Let us check the right answer. And uh, yes, we are right. The practice number three. It will, <clears throat> it will get more difficult. <laughs> Let's find results where the phrase is mentioned in the title, description and keywords. Axiom of countable choice or another phrase could be used. Axiom of multiple choice. But we are not allowed to use booleans. We need to use proximity operators. Do you remember proximity operators within the number of words or pre n number of words where n is a number of words? So we have two phrases, axiom of some choice. It, the choice could be countable and the choice could be multiple. We need to make a um, search uh we where we will find all the phrases the, the first one and the second one but we are not allowed to use booleans and or and not we need only to use proximity operators let's try to do this <clears throat> let's go back to our search let's clear the form and start from the white paper uh from the blank now uh, we need to look into the textual context content again and we will be looking uh, in the field code uh, title abstract keywords again again then we have two phrases what is the difference between these phrases we have the first and the last word the same and we have the of something and this something can be different it could be countable or multiple let's just say we need to find the axiom which stands within and scopus just shows us that we have such operator uh, the proximity operator within we just need to uh, mention a number of words within which we will have to search. How many words do we have between these words, between axiom and choice? We have two words of countable. So it is within two words of choice. What does it mean? It means that we have two words, axiom and choice, and they can be located in the text within two words between. So there could be two, some different words between them. Do we need to take these words into quotation marks or into curly brackets? Not, no, we don't have because our phrase is quite short. We only have the word axiom and we only have the word choice. So we don't need to use any quotation marks any special <clears throat> curly brackets here because if we would have the uh, more uh, longer sentence we, we would use the special characters like brackets but here we only have two words so let's search for it and i suppose that we will find both variants mm, we have looked for the field code 
um, title, abstract and keywords, but I guess that we will find some axioms in the title so that we can check this. Or if it is hard to check, let's just change the field code. Let's just copy our search and uh, let's uh, check the document title only so that we can see. Uh, OK. So that we can see the results in the document title, right? Title axiom within two words of choice. Let's search for it. We have 260 documents. And what do we have in our titles? The choice axiom. Uh, Lucy's choice axiom. Okay. Choice axioms. Axiom of choice. Axiom of choice. Axioms of choice. Uh, axioms of rational choice. So we have another word here. Uh, axiom of choice and uh, Lucy's choice axiom and uh, other variants. So um, we will find different axioms uh, and in these results we will have axioms of countable of multiple multiple and uh, axioms of different kinds of choices so we will have uh, different words between these two let's see yes we have we have put in the right keywords and the right operators and it doesn't matter if it is uppercase or lowercase the next one, and it will definitely be uh, a bit more difficult. Practice number four. Let's find search results where one of the following three exact phrases, exact phrases we have here, are mentioned in the title, description and keywords, line integrals, surface integrals, volume integrals using logical operators or boolean operators uh, they are also called boolean operators or the synonym, synonym might be logical operators which are and or and not so what we have here is three exact phrases exact phrases we are looking for in uh, field code in a field code, document, abstract, keywords. Now let's clear it is, let's clear it and go back to the document, abstract, keywords. We have three exact phrases. Uh, how do we need to put them in? We need to put them in curly brackets, right? Okay, line integrals, Surface integrals is also another uh, exact phrase, and volume integrals is the third one. And we are asked to find all the results where one of the following three exact phrases are mentioned. One of them. So our logical or Boolean operator will include or or helps us find one of these variants it could be line integrals or surface integrals or volume integrals or we can find all the documents where uh, there will be two of them or even three of them but they will stand separately in the text let's search and let's see what we have found. We have found a big amount of documents. And, uh, <clears throat> and Scopus shows us our search um, and we can edit it anytime. And we can see that we have uh, different kinds of um, integrals here mentioned, surface integrals and line integrals mentioned. Uh, okay. 
And I guess we will find more of them if we just uh, scroll down a little bit, but we don't have much time. So we have found this, uh, this um, exact phrases and we have found all result where one of the following phrases is mentioned. And we are right again. Practice number five, more difficult. In the advanced search, find all results from Ukraine. This is tricky. In the field of humanities, in the subject area of humanities, this subject area can be also called in Scopus Arts and Humanities, sponsored by, so we have some funding or some sponsor or some gra grant uh, sponsoring organization, which is called in this example European Research Council. Using the search fields affiliations, subject areas and funding. Let's go back to our advanced search and clear this all. Let's clear this all and start from the beginning. OK, we need to find all the documents, all the results from Ukraine. How do we do it? We need to go to affiliations. Let's remember we have affiliation field. Affiliation city. Affiliation country. Affiliation ID is a serial number of organization in Scopus. And the affiliation organization is the name of the organization different from the affiliation. So uh, in this particular example, we need to use the code affiliation country because we are looking for a country. Affiliation country, let's click on the plus and we just put in Ukraine. We don't have to take Ukraine into curly brackets or into um, quotation marks because it's just one uh, word. Then what we have also, we have the field of humanities, also called arts and humanities in the subject areas field. Let's go to the subject areas field, subject areas. And we need to find humanities here. It could be tricky in Scopus because Scopus um, has its own way of um, providing different areas, different subjects in its own classification. So in Scopus you have separately health sciences and separately life sciences which could include biological, agricultural, biochemistry, immunology, neuroscience, pharmaceuticals, etc. And then Scopus has the physical sciences separately. It, it is regarding physics and engineering. And then Scopus has social sciences and all the other kinds of sciences go here. So all, all of the economics, uh, law, uh, art and humanities, they are classified in Scopus as social, as social sciences. So we need to find for arts here. In social sciences, Scopus, is, Scopus provides arts and humanities, business management and accounting. Decision sciences, economics, finance, psychology, social sciences. So I guess by social sciences we will find psychology as well as political science, as well as international relations, as well as sociology and etc. And we need only arts and humanities. So let's click on plus near this title, near this field code arts and humanities. Let's click on plus. And we have subject area arts. Uh, do we need to put something between these two uh, lines? Yes, we need to use logical operator end because our, uh, our practice number five asks us to uh, find results from Ukraine that are in the field of humanities. So uh, these both options are, um, we need to use them both. So, so we need to use the Boolean and 
to combine these two options. Mm, all documents from Ukraine and these all documents from Ukraine need to be from the subject area of art. So we have used uh, logical operator and. We have another restriction. Our documents from Ukraine in the humanities need to be sponsored by the European Research Council. Uh, we need to find all the documents which were sponsored by the European Research, Research Council uh, using field called funding. Let's go and find this field code. Okay, funding. What do we have here? Funding information, funding sponsor, grant number, sponsor acronym. What is acronym? Uh, it could be a shortened name of the sponsor or the abbreviation of the sponsor. Mm, but here we need to use the funding sponsor code field because we have the full name of the sponsor. European Research Council, we need to put in the full name. And by the way, it is a phrase. Let's uh, use logical operator, Boolean operator and here. Uh, Scopus proposes that we use and or and not. We need and here. And funding sponsor. It goes like European Research Council. We will put it in here. Okay. And uh, what is this? This is a phrase, right? So we need to take phrase into something. Uh, otherwise, this phrase uh, will give us all the results. The search will give all the results where words European and research and council could stand separately in the text. We need the exact phrase search, right? Because we have the exact funding sponsor name. We need to take this exact phrase into curly brackets because this is an exact sponsor name. And let's try to search and see if we have found documents. Yes, there is only one research in the field of arts and humanities from Ukraine, which was funded by the sponsor European Research Council. Here is our search, uh, search uh, uh, string. Here is our query string. And we have one research. We can click on it. And I guess that somewhere in the mm, information we will find the funding information, funding details. And yes, we have found that this was founded by European Research Council. By the way, on the right, we can see the acronym, right? We have, um, we remember that we have a field code funding acronym. What is acronym? Acro acronym is an abbreviation of some organization. For example, uh, European Research Council has an acronym ERC. If you can uh, see it anywhere in the documents, you can know that it is European Research Council. So this uh, research was sponsored by European Research Council. And let's check if the answer is correct. And it is, it is correct. And practice number six, uh, and I guess it is the last one before we go to matrix. Practice number six must be the most different from the first part. Uh, find out if the journal with the title Mining of Mineral Deposits deposits which has ISSN number. ISSN number, we remember that ISSN number is a serial number of each journal. Whether this journal is indexed in Scopus using the tab sources or using advanced search. Let's begin with the simplest way. The simplest way is the tab sources. We go to the tab sources and we know the exact name of the journal, Mining of Mineral Deposits. We can type in the title of this journal, 
mining of mineral deposits. And Scopus suggests that this could be this journal and it proposes it to us. We have one search result, mining of mineral deposits with some specific site score and different kind of metrics, which we will talk about. What is the other way? The other way is to use the ISSN number to look for the journal. Uh, we have previously talked about uh, some difficult issues with the journal names. Journal names from non-English speaking countries might be transliterated differently. And uh, Scopus can index those journals also, but the best way to look for these journals, to search for these journals is by the ISSN number. And Scopus, of course, provides this possibility to find for ISSN number, which is a serial number of a concrete journal. We have this number here. It always includes eight numbers. Let's find sources. And we have the same result, mining of mineral deposits. We can go to this uh, profile, the journal profile. We can see the years of coverage. This is the Ukrainian journal from Dnipro University of Technology in the city Dnipro in Ukraine. It has an ISSN number, an online ISSN number. What is the main difference? Uh, sometimes you can find journal websites where they indicate that they have the ISSN and EISSN. ISSN means that this journal is published on the paper. It is published on the paper. So it means that uh, they are publishing this journal and uh, you can buy it in some uh, stores like on the paper. EISSN e e means that it is an electronic ISSN number, which means that the journal is also published electronically on the website. And you can download, for example, full texts as PDF, or you can read full texts as HTML text on the website. And they have both serial numbers for publishing the journal uh, on the paper and for publishing the journal online. Uh, you can uh, use any of it, any of this ISSN, either first or second, and uh, Scopus will find this journal for you. We have the subject area and we can look for all the documents from this journal. We can start reading it. We have the site score here, but we will go back to site score uh, some time later today because we need to try another option is to search with advanced search. Uh, there are some very um, interesting, very um, un unpopular, I don't know how to say this right, some situations which uh, are not very common, but sometimes they can occur. Uh, when the journal is indexed, um, for example, uh, it was indexed lately, uh, it only entered when the journal only entered Scopus, for example, in 2021, yes, in 2021, and it is absent from the sources list. So <clears throat> the journal website indicates that the journal is indexed in Scopus. You go here to sources and you cannot find it. What is the other way, the other option that you can do? You can go to the advanced search. Let's go to advanced search. No, we want to conduct a new search, right? We need to clear this form and we need to search for this journal. What is the mm, possibility, the best possibility to do this? Again, we have two options. First, we can search for the title and the second, we can search using the ISSN number. The first, let's take the title. For example, we have found this journal, journal's website. We can just copy the title, go to Scopus. We will be using field codes. What field codes can we use to look for the journal? 
we need to find the field code publication because it is something regarding the publication itself. Article number, book publisher, code N, date of publication, EISSN e or uh, electronic ISSN, exact source title. Yes, right, this is our situation. We have the exact source title. We have the exact journal title and we need to use this field code. So we click on plus and we are using the exact source title. We have the exact journal title, which is a phrase. Again, it is a phrase. We have more than two words and we need to put this phrase in curly brackets to find for this, to look for this journal. Exact source title and apps, well, I'm sorry, not apps, but Scopus shows us what it is. Exact source title, we will be looking for searches in the title of the journal, book, conference, proceeding, or report in which the document was published. Yes, we need to find all the documents with exact journal title, mining of mineral deposits. Let's search for it and see what we have in result. We have more than uh, 380 documents from the journal uh, mining of mineral deposits. Uh, let's see if we have some um, journal profile here. Yes, we can go to any document page and we can see that there is a link to the journal profile mining of mineral deposits. But the other way is to use the ISSN number. The ISSN could, um, could go with a hyphen. Sometimes you can see it uh, with a hyphen or without it. And it doesn't really matter because it will find both variants. So let's go to our search page. Let's clear it. And we need to search for all the documents from this journal using the ISSN number. What field code do we need to use? Again, publication. And let's see if we have ISSN. Be careful, there is an ISBN, which is as Scopus indicates, a unique identification number assigned to books, ISBN assigned, assigned to books, ISSN assigned to serial publications such as journals. We need an ISSN because we have a journal. And we just type in the ISSN number. We don't need to put it in, into curly brackets because it's one number. And we will find the documents here. Uh, all the documents will be from the mining of mineral deposits. You can, uh, by the way, click on the source title, on the journal title right here on the results page and it will go, it will transfer you to the journal profile as well. So there are two ways of doing this. The first way is to find it in the to find it in the sources tab. But there are some cases when the journal is uh, the journal is new to Scopus. It was only indexed in the last year. And uh, it does not have the profile page yet. Sometimes it happens very rarely, but sometimes it happens. And um, sometimes you need to use the advanced search to look for the journal title like this one, exact source title and the title of the journal. Or the even better way is to use the ISSN because it only requires uh, eight numbers which you can copy and paste from the website of the journal and you will definitely find all the documents from this journal uh, even if the journal has changed the name even if the journal can use different names, even if the journal uh, can be transliterated from another language into English and etc. Now, let's see what do we have in Web of Science. 
if we need to find, uh, if you need to find, let's take this uh, journal again. I guess it could be indexed in Web of Science also. I haven't uh, actually looked up this journal in Web of Science yet, but I guess this could be, it could be um, indexed in Web of Science as well. Let's try to find it. In Web of Science, um, how do we use Web of Science? On the campus, it works without logins and passwords. And from home, you also need to log in through your um, emails, your corporate emails. So we need to find the mining of my mineral deposits using what? In Web of Science, we do not have the tab sources here. We don't have the tab sources. We can just search like for documents, for authors and for cited references. So how do we find journals here? It is quite different here because in Web of Science, on the navigation panel, we have this button products, products. We can click on it and we need to uh, we need to use master journal list, master journal list. It means the main journal list. It's a list of all journals indexed in where? In Web of Science, of course. Uh, let's use this product master journal list. And it will be opened as a separate website. This website has a separate URL address. Uh, I will um, share with you all the links. And we can start typing in some subject area or the name of this journal. Let's try to find our mining of mineral deposits and see if it is indexed in Web of Science. Yes, as you can see, this journal is indexed in both Scopus and Web of Science. And in Web, in Web of Science, it also has its profile. But the profiles of journals are not implemented in the Web of Science uh, interface. The profiles of journals are on the opposite, on the separate uh, web address, the master journal list. And here we can find the uh, journals profiles. Mining of mineral deposits. Let's go see this uh, profile page. Uh, no, it will not allow me to do this because I need to remember my uh, login and password. To, uh, to log in into master journal list, you need to create your free account and to, to enter it. And I don't remember it right now, but um, we, we can just create our personal uh, free account here and uh, log in and uh, view all the profile pages. By the way, um, as well as we mentioned in the Scopus uh, variant where you can create your account and you can use all the Scopus products uh, using this uh, account like Mendeley or Science Direct, the same situation, the very same situation is with Web of Science. If you register or sign in, and uh, the very best practice is to register if you can um, firstly, if you can firstly go to the uh, login via uh, login with uh, corporate email, then click on Web of Science or Web of Knowledge is like a synonym. Then uh, you can register or sign in and your uh, logins and passwords will work with all the products of Web of Science and they will be linked with your Kiev Mohila Academy account. So they will be linked with Kiev Mohila Academy. Uh, if you have seen that we have this uh, signature state scientific tech library of Ukraine, but not Kiev Mohila Academy, this is fine because the state scientific tech library of Ukraine is the operator of the access to Web of Science. So it just means that we have access and it is all right. 
So if you can log in with your corporate emails and then register or sign in into Web of Science, you can just uh, then use all the products like master journal list, but do not forget your passwords like I did right now. So just write down your password and you can use all these products like Pablon, EndNote, a reference manager, EndNote Click. Uh, it's a very good service to find full texts, and I suppose that you could download it for you. So uh, it was the first, um, the first possibility to find the journal in Web of Science is just go to the master journal list and just type in the name of the journal and we have found this journal. It is indexed in Web of Science, so we have proven it. Yes, the journal is indexed. What is the second option of finding journal in Web of Science? By ISSN number, of course. Let's just copy it and now we need to use the Web of Science itself. And we will be using the Web of Science advanced search. Web of Science advanced search also includes some field codes. It is called field tags. Some booleans. Booleans are, uh, are called and or not. But these field codes, you need to type them in by yourself. In Scopus, you could just click on um, the plus near each field and here you need to type it in. So, we need to look for the journal by its ISSN. Let's see what is the field code for ISSN. ISSN field code is called IS. We just need to type it in by ourselves. IS. And we need to use brackets and to put this ISSN number into these brackets. Let's search and see if we can find these documents from this journal. Yes, of course, we have found uh, 385 documents from the journal. Mining of mineral deposits, and here they go. Yes, we can see that this journal is indexed in Web of Science because uh, we have found all these results. And moreover, we can see uh, starting from which year this journal is indexed, from 2015 until the current year. Let's go back to our presentation because we need to move forward and we need to look at some metrics. Let me just enlarge my presentation. Uh, we will start looking at the Scopus metrics and then we will go and see mm, some Web of Science metrics as well. When we have found any document in Scopus, we can see the basic metrics on the document page. For example, here is the article that we have found, the diagnosis of dementia due, due to Alzheimer disease. The journal name is Alzheimer's and Dementia. The journal is open access and it is indicated here. Uh, it was published in 2011. Uh, we have some abstracts, some uh, author information, some affiliations. On the right, we can see the citations of this article. The citations of this article, what do they mean? It means different articles, other articles that has added this article into their reference lists and it is automatically counted in Scopus. We have related documents on the right hand because if we have found this document and it is of our interest, then we can find all the other related or similar documents here. On the left hand, we can see the mm, ISSN number of the journal, so it just helps us to find this journal more easily. The DOI the digital object identifier number, which helps us find this article more easily. We can see abstract keywords, uh, topics and metrics because we have this metrics option. 
And in this metrics option, we can see some basic metrics. Document metrics include percentile. What does it mean percentile? Percentile is uh, counted by number of citations in Scopus. And it shows that this particular article is in the 99th percentile. So uh, it just takes all the articles or th all the documents in Scopus and uh, it is supposed to show the 100% of 100% of, uh, of documents. And these documents, this particular document was uh, uh, cited uh, more than 7,000 times. It is a very big amount. So it means that this particular document is in the 99th percentile. It is the highest percentile. And what, do, what does this mean? It means that this document has entered into the first, the one, uh, the highest percentile in Scopus. So this is one of the most cited documents in Scopus. You can use a uh, search for the highest citations or the most cited documents, or they are also called the highly cited documents. The very highly cited documents is a special term that indicates documents that received a big number of citations. And we can see that this is a highly cited document because it entered the 99th percentile of 100%. Yes, it is in the one, uh, is in the highest per percentile in Scopus. Also, we have here field weighted citation impact because percentile is a number of citations regardless of the field or the subject area. But we need to uh, compare, do, can we compare, for example, article in linguistics or article in history to article in uh, molecular, molecular genetics? I don't think so because article in linguistics will uh, receive less citations because arts and humanities are usually less cited than um, other fields. For example, physics, chemistry, medicine is very highly cited in uh, science and arts and humanities are less cited. So we need to compare um, some uh, articles inside their research area. And we have this indicator which is called the field weighted citation impact. Field weighted means it is weighted inside its field. It shows how well cited this document is when compared to similar documents. A value greater than one means that this document is more cited than expected according to the average in this field. What we also have, uh, Scopus started to provide uh, just a similar uh, statistics on how, how many times this article was viewed, how many times it was opened, etc. And also Scopus has its own internet and media usage metrics. It is called Plum X metrics, Plum X or internet and media usage metrics. They show us what happened to the article uh, when it was released into the internet, when it was published, when it started to be mentioned in Facebook, in Twitter, uh, uh, when people started to add this article in Mendeley. It could be also mentioned in news, on some blogs, uh, on TV channels, in a clinical surveys in uh, organizational or policy documents, etc. And it also shows the research impact, but number of citations always indicate the academic impact because it comes from the academic fields, it comes from the science. And this alternative internet and media usage metrics in Scopus, for example, called Plum X metrics, and we have different uh, others like Alt metrics and etc. 
they show uh, another alternative research impact, not academic, because it comes not from the academic sources. It comes from Facebook, from blogs, from Twitter, from news pages and etc. But it also shows impact of this article, of this research, because if this research was mentioned in the news, then surely it had its impact, of course. And you can track it here in Plumex metrics. The journal metrics. We just saw some document metrics. There are some metrics and indicators regarding journals. Uh, you can see the list if you uh, use the mm, sources page. For example, we have uh, a sources tab and we can see the list of journals in our chosen subject category, for example, molecular biology. Let's try to do this. In Scopus, we go to sources and we need to enter subject area, subject area. Let's try typing in molecular, molecular biology, molecular no, we don't have. Oh, yes, we have molecular biology. Uh, we can just use biochemistry, genetics and molecular biology because right now we just need to see the average picture of how this uh, matrix works. So, yes, we have the full list of all the journals in the field of molecular biology. And we have figures above here right here, that show us how many journals are included in this category. So how many journals are included in the category biochemistry, genetics and molecular biology? More than 3000 journals are in this category. And we have the most uh, well established, the most cited journals, for example, they are ranked by the site score metrics and the journal nature reviews molecular cell, bio cell biology is ranked number one in this subject category for 2020 so uh, nature reviews molecular cell, bi cell biology it is this journal it is number one in its field called biochemistry genetics and molecular biology so you can just enter your subject area here and you can look for journals and you can look you can look for top journals in your uh, subject area so you can by this you can see what are the key journals in your subject areas what are the key journals the most prominent journals in your topics you can start browsing their documents and you can start looking what were the articles published in them lately. Also, you can find the only open access journals like this, and we will have 575 jour journals uh, within the category biochemistry genetics, and all these journals could be re read with full text because this is open access. So what does this uh, journal metrics indicate? We have site score, highest percentile, citations, documents, uh, percentage cited and more options. Number of documents, percentage of cited, SNP, SGR and publisher. We can see the publisher name. We can, for example, select by publisher. Let's see. We have selected everything by publisher and it will be alphabetical from Z to A, like Walters Kluver and other publishers, Wiley Blackwell and others. So let's go to the journal metrics. Let's look at them. Site score. What is site score? Site score is a indicator of average number of citations per paper published over a three year period. A site score is a metric only that you can only use for journals. The paper 
or the article cannot have a side score. The author cannot have a side score. But journal can have a side score. The side score shows a total number of citations received in the selected year by documents published in the previous four years. Why four years? Because the current year, for example, 2021, does not count because the year is not uh, finished yet. The year 2021 is not finished yet and we cannot judge it by its numbers. So it can increase in numbers. Publications can increase in numbers. So we need to take previous four years, 2021, but we will look back at 2020, 2019 and 2018. So um, please make sure that you know that unlike the journal impact factor, which is only used in Web of Science, impact factor in Web of Science not only in, includes articles, reviews and conference proceedings paper, but Scopus side score also includes letters, notes, editorials, and other types of citable items, all indexed by Scopus. And this is a very important information, please. Uh, you can make notes or write it down. The impact factor as an indicator of journal citation was developed exclusively for the Web of Science platform. Only journals that are indexed in Web of Science can have impact factors. Scopus journals do not have an impact factor unless this journal is indexed in both Scopus and Web of Science. So if you have uh, if you have searched for a journal and you have found a journal indexed in Scopus, this journal can have the site score matrix. You can search for this journal also in Web of Science, and if it is indexed in Web of Science, it can have an impact factor metric. But any other impact factors or site scores from other databases, other than Web of Science and Scopus, such as uh, sometimes I could find some mentions of global impact factor or universal impact factor or uh, Eurasian site score, they are not valid. And if you can see the journal website that uh, mentions this uh, strange impact factors or strange site scores with strange names, you need to know that uh, these journals may include predatory practices. Predatory practices uh, means that they will take your money, for example, if you want to publish your uh, article in open access. They will uh, take your money for article processing charge, but your article mm, will be published in a very low quality journal because you will you don't need to mm, believe all the information that is uh, that is mentioned on the journal website. You need you need to uh, learn how to um, how to check this information by yourself. And you know that you can check the information about journal indexing by going to Scopus, by going to Web of Science and by checking if the journal is indexed in, in Scopus and in Web of Science. So don't believe all the um, information mentioned on journal websites because some journals, they work as predatory publishers. So they just take the money and they publish anything and they are not indexed anywhere, but they mention it on the websites. And sometimes they mention some strange names such as global impact factor. This is uh, global impact factor. It's not a valid metric. Scopus includes other journal metrics besides site score. For example, highest percentile. What does it mean, highest percentile? A site score per percentile indicates the relative standing of a serial title in its subject field based on the site score metric. 
site score uh, is relevant to all the subject areas and highest percentile will stand for the specific field of science, the specific subject area. SNP, another one, is called source normalized impact per paper, indicates the average citation count per paper, but also takes into account, account the likelihood of being cited within the journal's subject category. Um, SNP is adjusted to account for differences in citation behavior between different academic disciplines. So you can use this number to compare journals in different subject fields. But what are the most uh, common metrics that someone can ask you for is, of course, it will be the um, impact factor, the site score, the number of citations and the age index. These are the most common uh, metrics that someone can ask you to show if you are um, uh, writing and publishing as a scholar or if you want to check them in Scopus and Web of Science. And these metrics, they can be used, they can be useful for you, but they are not very common. Uh, we will go on now to uh, the H index, but first uh, we need to look at the very useful option, which is called to compare sources. To compare sources means that you can compare different journals so that you can select one journal where you want to publish. You can select compare sources to access uh, this instrument in Scopus. Uh, you can find it in Sources tab, in Scopus Source Details page, or in Advanced Search page. You can select up to 10 different journals within a variety of parameters. For example, we have different journals, Academic Journal of Manufacturing, ACI uh, materi Materials Journal, ACI Structural Journal, ACM Journal of Emerging Technologies. They have different side scores, but we uh, do not recognize the big difference in it, for example, and we need to look at the pictures to understand these differences. We have the line graph. The line graph where each line is uh, in the different colors, uses different colors. For example, the red line is for the ACM Journal of Emerging Technologies. And we can uh, check by the different parameters. For example, publications by year, SGR by year, citations by year, SNP by year, site score by year, etc. Et for example, site score of these publications, the biggest one is in this journal, ACM Journal of Emerging Technologies. So the side score of this journal is increasing rapidly in the last years. It means that the journal is getting to publish more and more articles and is getting to be cited more and more. So it receives more and more citations. As the two journals, uh, um, they uh, remove, they um, are uh, just steadily going through this way and not very changing. And the last one is going uh, on the very lowest. Uh, it hit the lowest um, numbers. Also, we have one journal, the fourth journal that only was indexed in 2018. So this is a short blue line. <clears throat> and you can go through different parameters and see how uh, does citations differ. For example, citations in one journal will be very high or ve very low, and some journals do not receive any citations at all. So this instrument to compare sources helps you to see uh, for example, you have four different journals which you would like to, pub to get published in and you can choose the right one to get published because you want to get published in the journal that is in it is interesting for uh, audience. You want to get published in journals that uh, receives citations 
that is not going to die because uh, journal is uh, publishing more and more articles and etc. So uh, you can just use this instrument to choose the right journal to publish. Each journal profile page includes uh, some metrics, site score, SGR on the right hand. We will now see what SGR is. SNP, uh, which compares sources in the research area. Option to view all documents here and option to set up, set up document alert because if you want to receive new issues, you can set up the document alert and you will receive new notifications. Author metrics, the most important author metrics which you can use and see in Scopus are documents by author, citations by documents and age index. Age index means the um, productivity and citation count of the publications. Uh, the age index is the number, is the largest number which uh, articles have uh, the largest number of articles that you have and uh, each of these articles that you have need to have at least n citations. So uh, the largest n number of articles and each of this article uh, each article needs to have N citations. It is somehow mm, difficult to understand. But for example, if we are an author, we have five publications. Our five publications received nine, seven, six, two and one citations. Um, and our author's H index is three because we have only three publications with three or more citations. For example, this is an example of our publications. Publication number A received 10 citations. Publication number B received eight citations. C, five, D, four, E, three. What is our H index? We can start by asking ourselves a question. Uh, do we have five, uh, five documents? Because we have only five documents. Do we have five documents? Each of, uh, each of them, do, does each of them, each of them have five citations, at least five citations? Yes, we have one, two, three, but not, we don't have four or five documents because we have uh, publication D with less than five citations and publication E with less than five citations. Our age index would be five if we had five documents and each of these documents would have five citations, but we don't have them. Okay, then do we have four documents? Each of them uh, has four citations. A has four and more citations, B has four and more citations, C has four and more citations, D has four citations, but E does not. But yes, it's okay because we have four documents and each of them has four or more citations. So our H index is four. Well, you don't have to count this um, by yourself because Scopus and Web of Science counts this number, this H index, uh, automatically. And also H index is counted by uh, Google Scholar. Google Scholar is a search engine, uh, but you can create your author profi profile in Google Scholar and uh, if you have some texts, you can download them, for example, in the institutional repository like ECMAIR in Kiyomohila Academy. It will be indexed in Google and it will appear in your Google Scholar profile. And uh, if someone somewhere cites your article or your presentation or any text, you will receive the H index one. What is the age index if a person has 100 articles? 
uh, and each of these articles have one citation. The H index will be one, regardless of the number of the articles, because we need to have the um, we would have the age index 100 if we had 100 articles and each of them had 100 citations but if we have 100 articles and each of them has only one citation then our age index would be one if we have one article with no citations what is our age index it is zero uh, if we have, well, yes, of course, it is not necessary to count by yourself because Scopus will count it for you. So we have a couple of minutes left. Let's uh, see some practices. We need to find the name of the journal in which Kiev Mohila Academy students and scholars are most often published in Scopus using the search field affiliations. So let's go to Scopus search and let's go to the tab affiliation. We need a new search, right? OK. OK. We don't need advanced search. We need just a basic search. The tab affiliations. Uh, I have checked for Kilmohila Academy previously and it saved my search. But you can just start typing Kilmohila Academy or any other university that you have studied previously, for example. We can choose Kilmohila Academy and it will transfer us to the profile of Kilmohila Academy in Scopus. We can see that we have these documents, these authors in these research fields. There will be a nice pie chart will, where you can see all the subject areas. And you can see the collaborating affiliations. With which affiliations do our scholars most commonly publish? National Academy of Sciences, etc. And we have the step documents by source. It means in which document do the scholars from Kiev Mohila Academy most often publish. The first one is called the cybernetics and system analysis. So it means that scholars from Kiev Mohila Academy uh, have published 22 times in the journal called cybernetics and systems analysis. And this is the right answer. OK. And the next practice. We need to find the journal with the highest side score in the subject area dentistry, but I guess this is too easy for us. We just go to sources tab and in subject area we just type in the dentistry. Dentistry, yes, apply and we have uh, search results and the um, search result number one has the biggest side score in this uh, results field. So we have found the most cited and the most uh, prominent journal in the subject area of dentistry in Scopus. Yes, and we have, we are right. And the last minutes of our lecture, let's see uh, the good instrument called uh, the SGR, Cymago Journal and Country Ranking. It is another product by Elsevier, by Scopus. Uh, it is another website, just a separate website with a separate address than Scopus. But you can just browse all the journals here. Cymago Journal and Country Rank. I will share with you the link. Uh, we need the journal ranking. We can type in any subject areas or we can type in any countries, for example, or regions. For example, let's take the Africa region and the year will go like 2020. We do not have the 2021 
yet because the year is not finished yet. So we cannot we cannot count the numbers. We cannot judge by numbers the year 2021. It is not finished. We can only look back at 2020. We have all the journals from the region Africa here and the journals are located by the quartile. Quartile is another metric, is the last, the very last metric today. As a quartile is a ranking of the journal or paper by database based on the impact factor if it is in web of science or based by citations or based by site score it is if it is in scopus the quartile divides into four different uh, quadrats starting with quartile or q1 q2 q3 and q4 quartile number one q1 is the first position of the top 25 of the journals in a particular category. So this is the top 25 journals which are indexed. The quartile number two are the second quartile, but this is a good quartile also. Quartile number three is the uh, third one and the four is the last one. So uh, journals which receive the smallest numbers of citations, they go to the fourth quartile or Q4. And here in uh, SGR, we can see these quartiles. They look like uh, different colored uh, quadrats here. For example, Journal of Advanced Research is in quartile number one. We can see the country, it's Egypt. Then Let's go see the quartile number two, Journal of Diabetes Research. It's from Egypt also, it, very interesting. Then quartile number three, International Journal of Hepatology. And we will scroll down and eventually, oh, this is only 50 results, but we can go to uh, 258 results. And in the end, we will see the quart quartile number four from different countries. Again, this one, African Journal of Laboratory Medicine is from South Africa. Uh, and the Ethiopian Journal of Health Sciences is from Ethiopia. So you can just browse by regions or by specific countries. You can start typing the country, for example, Ukraine, and you will see all the journals from Ukraine indexed in Scopus and divided by quartiles. So you can see that uh, in Ukraine, we don't have the quartile number one. This is very sad. But we have journals indexed in quartile number two, three, and four. What does it mean if you are published in journal in quartile number one? It means that uh, you are published in the top 25% uh, top of journals indexed in Scopus. And what does it mean if your paper is accepted in journal in quartile four? Well, it actually means nothing. It's just uh, another way to get published in Scopus. No one will check that your uh, journal is quartile number four. It will be counted as a pub publication in Scopus, publication in journal indexed in Scopus. But quartile number four can mean that this journal, Experimental Oncology, it uh, appeared lately, so it does not have much audience, for example, so it does not receive many citations. The citations might increase. But sometimes quartile number four may, can mean that the journal is slowly uh, lowering in numbers, so it is slowly dying and it can be closed or it can be excluded from Scopus. Uh, were there any uh, examples when journals were excluded from Scopus? Yes, there were some examples. Uh, for example, uh, the journal can be excluded if it follows some predatory uh, publishing practices. For example, uh, if the journal had 
20 articles published per year before it, it was indexed in Scopus and after it entered Scopus. It increased the number of uh, publishing materials to let's say 2000 so from 20 articles to 2000 articles per year this is a real example it happens sometimes in scholarly world world and uh, this journal can take the article processing charges so it just earns money from authors uh, who want to publish who want to get published in scopus so this can be considered as a predatory publishing experience and this journal can be excluded from Scopus. And there can be other different situation when, situations when journal can be excluded. But uh, the main thing you know is that you can choose the uh, SGR, Cymega Journal uh, ranking, and you can choose journals by quartiles, by countries and by subject areas. Uh, as well as in Web of Science. Also, you can use the journal master list to sort by um, titles to look for some specific countries. For example, here, country region. Let's start, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you can just sort by countries and we will not uh, continue doing it by now by because we have not much time left. So I guess this is it. Um, please say if you have any questions and um, and I will share with you these presentations and materials. Let me just stop the recording now. And um,